Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the All or Not On Podcast with myself, Billy Moore, and today's special guest and public speaker, entrepreneur, Kate Stewart. How are you, Kate? I'm all right, Phil. How are you? Brilliant. Thank you for coming along. Tell us a little bit about yourself so the audience gets to know who you are. <sighs> Where do I start? Like James Where English says at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I'm just a normal girl from a council estate. Bit of a scally. Um, got through out of school. Had a baby at 17. Had no money. Bones in my ass, going with a drug dealer. He left me, obviously, with the child on my own. And I just thought, fuck this. I want more. I want to do something with my life. So I'd always had a massive weight ethic. Worked on a burger van on Matthew Street from when I was 13. Um, worked in sports shops. I always got sacked Was a chambermaid in the Adelphi. But I've always worked. And I've just got off my ass, made a bit of money. And that's about it. And that's it. And thank you for coming along. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> There's more to you than just that. So yeah, so you've done. You know, you're, you're actually doing a lot now for the community. So do you think all your your past experiences have opened your eyes to what's going on in, in the community these days? I never was to this bill. Yeah. Like literally, I remember having lechy tokens, and the lechy went in the house, and I didn't yeah. have the money to put it in. I just literally didn't have it. So I know how hard it is, and especially with the cost of living crisis right now. And I think as entrepreneurs from the city and from a, and having a bit of money, it is our duty to help the less fortunate than yeah. ourselves. You know, we have got a duty to help people. My nan, I was brought up by my nan, and she was like Mother Teresa. She used to make teas for everyone in the roads and everyone was always knocking on the door someone's husbands had battered them she'd let them in to stay in ours so we were always brought up that you help other people it was instilled into us from when we yeah. were a kid and working in Anfield it's a deprived area Bill and yeah. you say like even now I'll do something for the community and you've got to get words out there to like for people to know what's available. Yeah. And then you get you get shit. It's like, look at her, why is she telling people? I don't tell people. The echo will come and ask me and say, What's going on? I'll say, Well, this is happening and we're open on these days and you share it on your social media platform yeah. so that people know I couldn't give a shit about myself. Yeah. It doesn't make me any money. No, it's just like people think you know, you are doing things and you're doing it for a bouquet of flowers to be thrown at you and go, You're just doing it because it's that it's, it's in, like you just said, then it's instilled. Right, yeah. there's no agenda. No, no. You know, I'm not here to be famous. I'm not here to get any money out of anyone. I'm here to help people in my city, in my community. And if I, if I can do that and I can get the message out there, then I will. And I, okay. I see that, right, but it's, it's like they say, small-minded people, you know, see it differently, don't they? So over the winter, like when this lecky bills went up, your ears, an example, Bill, where I'm going to show you how there is a different side to Liverpool. Um, so when the the lechy bills went sky high and all that and I was looking and thought I can't let this happen fucking people sitting with no heating on freezing and can't afford to feed the kids I'm not having it so I said I'll open the sands at um, one of the rooms in the Acorn the biggest function suite and I'll cook everyone's teas and over the winter we've done 2,000 meals so we had the eating on blast and blah 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 I had four phone calls put in to the lucky board to say my lucky was on the fiddle. Yeah. So they come out four times and inspected the site and they were like, no. So in the end, I said, look, you just come one more time and take legal action against us because yeah. it's harassment. Um, I said, and I also want a certificate to say that all of my electricity is above board and fine. I said, because I am absolutely sick of it. So even though you're trying to help people and it all come up my pocket bill, there was no fundraising, there was no nothing. I just done it. They've still got people ringing up saying me lechies on the fiddle. It's like, it's clearly not. 
Mm. It's like the, a friend of mine said that last week. He said, "Billy, the eye arrives, the sharp than eyes." Absolutely. You know, people, people uh, seem to just sit back, jealous, envious, resentful, bitter. Can't stand the fact that someone is actually doing something positive, not only with their own life but with you know their own community while they're sitting in, in the house. And it's it, I, I get it. I see it. I've experienced it. Mm. Case you know, it's not a. Um, it's always the ones you least expect as well. It is. You? It is. just the, the smiling assassins. Yeah. Those ones that are just like, hi, hey, I'll just stab you yeah. in the back at the same time. I, I, I get it. And um, it's always anonymous and it's always like uh, the secret squirrels. You know, no one's ever going to say it to your face. No, but no. There's one same as on to be like, hi, babe. It's like, fuck off. Yeah. But you know, you've, we've got to do something, Billy. I mean, the city is going to shit. You do, I've got ones, I, I put a post up as well, where this did piss me off, right? Mm. So I am doing free meals for the families, for the kids, cups of teas at the Bouncy Castle up so the kids could play up until eight o'clock. And then all they had to do was take the kids to and put them in bed. And they're standing outside, smoking ciggies by the fucking minutes and asking me why the bar's not open. Now, if you can afford to buy ale and smoke ciggies, then you shouldn't be here. I'm yeah. very sorry to say, because if my kids, and I know people were saying, well, they've got an addiction, we'll go to the doctors and do something about it. You can get nicotine patches off the NHS. Do you know what I mean? So I am very like that as well. It's like, I don't mind giving to those who need it, but don't take the piss. So yeah, for those who will just take advantage, you can see them a mile off. Yeah. You know, the, the, you can see them coming and, and, and I get what you mean. You, you know, people who are, um, you know, screaming poverty, but are, they are getting takeaways every night. And they've got fucking lips like mm. Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seen a few of them today, like... Um, oh, my bad, but my bad knows I wouldn't fucking accept that. Um, so, so what is it that like you know? So you've you've gone from like it's brilliant your story because you've gone from nothing, from like literally like fucking living with a drug dealer who's fucking left you with a kid and you know you're on a council estate you grew up in that area mm. and like, you 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 know you've become a millionaire in your own city. You know how did you achieve that by being a cheeky bastard? Come on, tell me how, how so, cheeky you was. Um, I. Yeah, I left school with no qualifications, not on whatsoever. Just before we carry on, you've left school with no qualifications. This is just so people know that it doesn't mean you've got to... I mean, go to school, whoever's watching, if you're yeah. watching this, it doesn't mean not... But to not have the qualifications is to be where you're at today. I want to know how that's yeah. happened. I know you're so beginning. So I'm streetwise, Billy, that's the thing. And I've got... I've got a bit of confidence in myself, do you know what I mean? I've always been a bit of a cheeky bastard. Yeah. So... I was in school, I just didn't engage with the education programme, it was boring. So they're sitting telling me about fucking all different religions and RA, and I was just thinking, what am I doing here? So I'd sag off school and like, but go like the museums and yeah. shit like that. I was interested, but it, they just didn't teach me right. So I think I've got a bit of ADHD. Um, so I was getting Nick smoking in the bushes or get Nick's bringing stuff in to sell in school, so I get suspended for that. My mum used to drop me outside the school, I'd jump over the wall and get off. But it is half way to So at 13, I used to wake up outside the cavern club, selling hamburgers till four o'clock in the morning on a burger van. And I'd go home, stink of onions, get a shabbat, and then have to go to school because I'd be forced to go. So I did like working, I liked having money in my pocket. Yeah. Left school in the end, the school was just like weighing ass. It wasn't like it is today. They didn't want me there because I was a headache. Do you know what I mean? I'd lock the teachers in the cupboards and just be a little fuck. So it was easy for them not to have me there. So we're like, okay, just don't come anymore. So I got a job in the Adelphi, cleaning toilets, changing beds. That Ari and Downey was there in them days when the program was getting made. Mm. One bitch <laughs> um, got sacked from there, and then uh, the Marriott. I think it was. The Marriott was, there was a call the Dolby Hotel, or the Swallows Hotel then. Got a job in there as well. Got sacked from there. Then I worked in First Force on Church Street. And then I went and trained as a beautician and um, waxing people's eyebrows and vaginas at 10 o'clock in the night to get a few pennies in. Working in some bed shops. And then me mate said, this fellow's coming up from London. He owns Camden Market. He's doing the Camden of the North. Yeah, yeah. So... Cockney wide boy goes in. I was like, can I have a job? He told me to fuck off, get out. And I was like, cheeky bastard. So 
I kept going back and saying, can I have a job? And in the end, he went to me, I'll tell you what you can do, you fat, ugly midget. You can be... A, what he said. <laughs> yeah, you can be a, um, a dwarf in the fucking grotto. Yeah. So I went, all right, then I will. And he went, I'll give, you, I'll give you 150 quid a day. I was like, sound fucking dressed up Stanley's off freezing like this like the little bastard kids but I thought no I'm gonna do it so in the end he was like okay you can have a job in the office so I was like right but he was an alcoholic so he was never there but hmm. like so I learned loads of him but learned loads not what to do yeah as well so I ended up running the business anyway and then he got sacked and these big billionaires um, Jewish billionaires from London come up and they were like we need someone to do it so I had to go to London and do a presentation so I'm five foot speak like a docker <laughs> um, and I just don't look the part let's be honest Bill do I but I went down and I'd done a PowerPoint presentation and you play to these people's greed I've always known literally like, how to read people and how to I'm good at that as well like thinking I ah, know how to get around you Mm. And it's on the PowerPoint presentation. I was saying, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Most of the stuff I was fucking lying. But I thought, sell the dream. Um, and I think on my feet. That's I'm a problem solver. That's where my forte is. So I got the heritage. And at the time, Liverpool One was getting built. And all the designers were given Liverpool City Council millions to get rid of all the... Um, counterfeit and where was the fucking kingdom of counterfeit the heritage market so literally it was getting raised by the minute i was just like oh shit what have i done um and he came in and said we're gonna do you for proceeds of crime you're taking money off them in rent and it's a proceeds of crime so it was a big threat really to get rid of them yeah yeah and i mean bill at the time they were making more than drug dealers like they would open at nine o'clock, the gates is open. And in the heritage. In the heritage. Yeah, oh, and sorry, as soon as them gates opened, they'd be taking 30 grand. They were manufacturing it in the cellars. <laughs> Just like, oh God. But they said, if you don't stop it, you know, we're going to go for you. And at the time, um, I was like, shit, what am I going to do? So I just had to front it, and I did knock around with that, that time when I was only 22, I did knock around with a few scallies, and then I was like, look, if anyone comes here, will you help me? And yeah. um, I had to go and stand on the gate and say, you're not getting on. And they were like, going to fucking burn your house down, we're going to do this. I said, if you're telling me you're going to burn my house down, you're not going to do it, because if something happens to my house, we're going straight to you. I said, I worry about the people who don't tell me, there's nothing I can do. I can't let you on. I've got a responsibility to the traders who were legit as well, which I did, Billy, because there's people who've been on markets for like, the families have done it for hundreds of years yeah. and their businesses are just being destroyed. So all the counterfeit gone, the market was shite. No one wanted to come, did they? So I had to reinvent it. So I was saying, okay, all entrepreneurs, you just can have free space down here. We'll help you start your business, our mentors, and to get proper legitimate traders in change it all around so we went from having like 70 traders to like 650 i built it up and then i had an just a market of a sunday but a site all through the week so i reopened the odds off done loads of weird house raves you'll see them all going now but but the young kids no the old ones the older ones like the older ravers like we had two thousand people in in the tobacco warehouse raving on like a Boxing night, New Year's Eve, we done them once a month. And then I invited loads of film companies down to come and look at the space because you weren't getting a space like that and it's being empty and disused as well. Yeah, because a, a lot of Peaky Blinders just kind of used it there, didn't need that well, area. Then I got Captain America to be filmed there. Yeah. Um, Sherlock Holmes. And it's bizarre, really, like you're sitting in the Edison market and like you look out your, um, your window and it's Jude Law and what's the other fella who's Iron Man? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Junior, whatever his name is, they are walking. Downy Junior. Yeah, Robin. they're walking past your window. It's just like, oh, hi, Jude. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that went really, really, really well. Um, and I was making footballers' money from when I was like twenty six. Wow. Um, was the fucking stupid with it? Yeah, it was. Does it blow most of it? Yeah, it did. Because it's like. 
It's mad, isn't it? Because like you're like 26 years old, you haven't really matured and experienced life as much as you have as as you have now. Yeah. So at that time, like it's like it's easy come, easy go, isn't it? I went to fucking ball. Yeah. <laughs> like I literally, I, did. I, I did. had a ball, and do I regret it? Never do. Because you know what, you can't take money with you when you die, and I'm no. still like that now. Like easy day, come day, go day. Because I know I've got in me to make money so i've been on my ass bill mm. i before today we'll move on a little bit but before today i've had to take my fucking jewelry off and go to the pawn shop to pay my staff's wages do you know what i mean yeah and you just do i think because of my background yeah you just do what you've got to do do you know what i mean but there's loads of misconceptions like oh she's got this off this fella i have never had one pound off a fella i've never had no help off a fella i've more i've had hardens off them that's what i fucking have had do you know what i mean um i've been shit on by them but i've done it myself and i don't know no one nothing and i've never gone into partnerships with people i've never worked with big banks i've never done these consortiums or whatever i've just always been a one-man band and yeah. i like it like that so independently making your own yeah money so so after the heritage um there was a big development redevelopment plan come and i sat down with the council and they were like look Kate, if you move we'll find a new site and we'll give you plan and permission and you can move the site i was like okay fine done deal um i found the site face and brunswick train station i think now it's getting used as a go-kart in place so it was wrote for approval, put forward for planning for approval. That much so, Billy, that I'd even bought the signs and everything. Like we'd paid 20 grand for the signs to be done outside there. Um, and say the planning was the Thursday. Get a phone call at five o'clock on the Wednesday saying, you haven't got it. I was You're like, messing. What? Billy, I had spent, I got the um, the architects to do it who'd done the everything on Liverpool one. I think I'd spent like 150 grand on the planning and everything else. And I promised the traders. And do you know one thing I do, Bill? If I say something to you, I do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I always stick to my word. And I promised them traders, look, come on, move. I've got you in a new place. Everything's fine. And everything else. And I felt like the world had caved in on me because I was just like, am I going to tell these people? This is small, independent businesses who rely on me. Yeah. And I was just like, but you just promised me. You just told me I had it. And they were like, well, someone's come forward who doesn't want it there and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, <laughs> and I took a bad knock then. I think I suffered, like, I went off for about a year because I just couldn't deal with yeah. getting fucked over like that. And I swore then I'd never work with Liverpool City Council again. I was like, right, that's me done. Um, so from the... I'd been buying property for a few years as well. I bought a bar in Walton Vale. I'm getting Alzheimer's, I think, Bill, because... Yeah. I you're not, you're not the only one. one. Um, <laughs> I bought a bar in Walton Vale. I bought the Amish Tavern on Queen's Drive. Um, and I was just buying development plots as well. And at the time, everything was cheaper than what it is now. And then the Sandson was on the market. So I had... In the meantime, I had three babies in 12 months. Three? Yeah, because I'm not well, am I? Um, I had twins, and I had, when the twins were eight weeks old. I was waiting, so I was out there, I was like, what, yeah. three in 12 months? Mm. And then, so um, you had twins? I had twins, and then I, when they were eight weeks, I got caught again. Yeah. And just add in the mix, I bought the Sanson as well. Um, bought that, and again, turned that round as well invested into it put a 20 bedroom hotel in there with 136 beds partnered up with liverpool football club um done some major major events down there but like the champions league finals we've had like five thousand people travel from all over the world put big screens out there bars that's been a ball as well but you know what i've always learned like no, if I don't enjoy something, yeah. I'm not doing it. Like, mm. I like getting up and looking forward to go to work. Like, I love it. And COVID took that away from me a little bit. Like, I've never felt the same about the hospitality industry since. No, I was that just sad. I just, like, tarnished it a little bit. 
like I can't be asked anymore with yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Like I've lost that passion the that I had. Yeah. yeah, where it's like that's why I put it on the market. Where I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then, um, I got like six offers, like from different things. And I was like, um, I think I'll keep it for a bit longer. Like I couldn't relinquish control. Something wrong with me. As I said, I'm not well. But um, yeah, I haven't got the same passion and and enthusiasm as I had for that. But there you go. And then again, when we're saying about like being brought up in that that way of that we've got to help people and we've got to give back. A few of my family had suffered with drug addiction and going to rehab and they come out and they'd just be left in the same environment that made them want to go and take drugs and drink in the first place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they're still around the same people and the same influences and the same problems that turn them to drink and drugs. So it was costing, like, the local council 28 grand to put someone in rehab, put them out, and then it's a resolving door scenario. They'll have that, go out and commit crime to pay for their drugs, go back in jail, come out, and it's just a big mess. Yeah. And I've experienced it first hand of like not being able to get help for someone. So I was like, okay, right, what can I do about this? So I thought I'm going to open somewhere where people can come out of rehab, get abstinence under the belt, yeah. they're still monitored, put some structure in their lives because when people are going through addiction and that, their lives are chaotic, Bill. Every human being on this planet needs structure. You need a regime, right? You do this at this time. I know with my kids. So I found a site on the high street in Waverty. And I was like, okay. Went and headhunted this woman who's like got an OBA for recovery to be the head of services of it. And um, put all all together. Again, I had to go in for planning. It was absolute murder, Billy. Like literal murder. I was getting death threats. I was there was placards the place got smashed up being in hell and I had a meeting with the council and they're like are you sure you want to do this and I said yeah I am I said because I know what I'm doing right I don't put my name to something if it's going to be shit or I'm going to yeah. it's going to be bad I said I know what I'm doing right it can happen to anyone so there was meetings like 500 people turning up and not wanting you to have it there yeah like, not on our door set, we don't want this. I couldn't go to the planning committee. Me and I got warned not to go because I could get attacked. And I remember me head's office at the time was in the q and R building. I remember pacing the floor thinking, oh, God. Um, but I knew from a planning perspective what I was doing was yeah. right. So we get to our planning. It was like, you know, they'd fought us till the dying nail gets all the place done, every window got smashed on it just as we'd finished it. And I was, but that makes me more determined. I was like, okay, fine, so fucking Windsor. So I've got the Windsor company back out, put the Windsors back in. And then the lads, when they were moving in, they were scared, Bill. Do you know what I mean? They were like, well, you know, we're not wanted in the area. And Jackie and PJ, who run the programme, are like phenomenal. Like literally. I know both of them, yeah. 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 So, um, Anyway, we get the lads in, starts in there, like, we open the house up and said, you know, welcome the residents in, the lads go out and do the garden to the elder people, they do litter picking, they work in the community hub, and then it come out that the best thing to come out of Wafer Tree in 2019 was Vitality Homes. So it was just like, <laughs> you know, you, that, but if I, if you, I wouldn't have done that. If I wouldn't have stood firm and said, no, I'm, I'm doing it, and tear me back, every person who's been through that programme and succeeded would have had a different path. Like, there was a lad, and he was going, went into the woods to kill himself. Um, PJ rang him and said, we've got you to bed. And he thought, you know what, I'll give it one last shot. And he come to Vitality Homes. He was there right the way through lockdown. And he's just started his own business. He's got his family back. He's got his own place. He's got a girlfriend. And things like that, where you've just seen someone completely turn the life around, that makes me think, do you know what you're writing, what you're doing? And to give, to give a message out to people that if you believe in something, do not give up. Yeah. No matter what people will throw in your face or whatever, if you believe in it, fight for it and do it. I love that shout, mm. and I love the fact that, like, you know, you 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 
you're giving people hope and inspiring because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end, mm. you know, especially when you're feeling judged and you've had an addiction problem and you've gone through that, like, that chaotic lifestyle and that there's a, people are just turning you away, shutting the door mm. and you feel so isolated and desperate that the, the last, the only place you can go back to is your drug dealer. Exactly. That's where, you know, you said that people, places and things, you're surrounded by them. You know, you, you, the people you're with, the things that you do and, and the places that you go to, that's all you ever know and you're never going to get out of that circle. So for you, Kate, take me out off, to go out there and do that and be up against it, but you know you're doing it for the right thing because you don't need to do that for money. It's a CIC, yeah. Billy, and it's I a commu- Yeah, community. And, and I know I know PJ, good mate of mine, PJ, I like PJ and Jackie. I've known Jackie for years. Yeah, I think she went on his action for quite quite some time in Upstreet. And they have, you know, they you know, they they're doing what they do for the greater good, for the benefit of the community. I know what they do. Um and it's nice that you mentioned them because I didn't know I had no idea that you were you were involved in something like this to be fair, yeah. which was uh, so they've been Which me. is a new elevation. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're a fucking bit of a whiz kid, aren't you on a sly? So do you know what it Jackie and PJ are both tell you like oh she's doing it for money. Billy, it costs me a fucking fortune. Like they get the lads get house on benefit, right? Mm. But if I was to let that out, let one of my businesses out at my buildings out as an um, student's accommodation, I'd make money. I don't make one pound out of Vitality Homes. Yeah. Not one pence it costs me because by the time you pay the staff, the lehi, the gas, the water, your council rate, the business rate, the council tax and everything else. All the safeguarding that goes with it. Everything, the fire alarm, CCTV, fire risk assessments, and making sure everything's fire retardant, making all the repairs on the building. I don't make one pound, literally not one pound, but... As I go back to saying, everyone needs second, third, fourth chances. Yeah. And loads of people out there are so fucking judgmental. Like, literally. People might fall off the wagon, Bill. And you know what? You know what you do? You fucking pick them back up and say, come on, lad, get back on, try again. And they might fall again. But we'll do it again. I know, not everyone's journey straight. I mean, I've been in recovery now for, what, 19 years? Well done. Right, it's 19. I haven't, and I'm not 19 years clean. I'm six. Right, and I've had I've had five years here, and I've had I've had four years there, and you know I've been diagnosed with this illness, and and, and I just fell off, right? And it's it's the fear has always took me back out mm. there, the fear and the the vulnerable kind of temptation. It's just a lot. There's a lot. You never cured. There's no cure. No, and I and I say that right. So people say, oh, I I I can't like cope with people. Who go, I'll never use again. I go, okay, right. Come back to me fucking in five years, ten years, and tell me that you never used in that time, and I'll, I'll I'll say you're okay. For me, it's like I know I've got a problem, and I've got to address it every day. And I said exactly the same thing you just said now yesterday, and I done a little video, and it was about uh, second chances, right? People are quick to judge, you know, pull a chair from under your feet, bring up your past. Like I, I do a lot for the community. I'm, 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 I'm a lot more beneficial than I ever have been. Okay, I, I, like I wasn't Mother Teresa. Same. I was definitely, <laughs> I was definitely chaotic. I was the most important thing in my life was drugs. You know where to find them, how to get them. If you had them, I'm getting them off you. It doesn't matter. What's your drug of choice, Billy? My drug of choice is what you've got. I didn't yeah. care, right? The, I, I had nothing. I, I, in the end, it was just like whatever was there. And I, uh, and I, and I was given a chance, and and I took that chance and, and threw a rehab out of the way and. I've maintained that that abstinence all the all the time, and that's only through like speaking to people who've been there, the predecessors, and sharing like lived experiences. Yeah. I know it's a bit of a cliche, oh lived experience, but it is. It actually is. It is if for me. Like if someone comes to me, and go, Bill, you're inspirational. You know, you're inspiring, and you're honest. And it's not. It's like like it's. Like, I was never honest, right? I was never a bad kid. I was just in a bad place, taking something that took me to a wrong. Like, do you think that addiction is like in your DNA? Do you think it's like hereditary? See, I've 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 sat I've been in like in recovery, like I said, for nineteen, it's going on twenty years now. And I've sat in meetings with people who talked about like they were born, right, an addict. And I think, okay, so what happened to me was I started parroting everyone else in the meeting that was talking because I thought if they were born with it, I must have been born with it. I never had my own opinion. Mm. It was only until I thought no. There was for me there was contributing factors that led 
to the way it behaves. Well, it doesn't matter if you've got millions in the bank no. or you've got fuck all. Addiction doesn't exclude. No. It doesn't like, oh, okay, we're going to leave Kate alone because he's got a few quid. But Billy, he's fucking skin. Get here, you. You fucking little scruff. We're going to fucking throw a few bags down you. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. What happens to me? Whether you've had a good upbringing or a bad upbringing, like for me, it was a bit poor. It was a bit difficult. I was escaping a lot of trauma. And that's, um, there was no choices. I was a kid from the 70s, 80s. I never had the choices that we have today and there was no interventions like there was that, that we've got now. It was fucking it and miss. And there was, there was loads of violence in my life. And I kind of used to bury all that stuff. But then burying it, it didn't go away. It just kept it there in a little like, lid for a few years. And then when just they get plaster, clean, it just, it? yeah, it was a plaster on a disaster. And, and it's just a big wound, gaping wound, opens up and bang. Fuck, and someone said, Bill, stop, pull that mirror out, sit down, have a look at yourself, focus on what's going on, deal with it now, heal. It's like the, the layers of an onion, you're going to start, and I didn't want to, there was a thin line between being vulnerable and angry, mm-hmm. right? I was fucking all right with being angry, but it was to show you like I was upset and hurt. I was like, oh, you're going to think I'm fucking weak. So I learned how to, to become vulnerable and, and get honest. And by doing it, it was, I found it was more attractive to people. They kept, they, it was more warm. More they, yeah, they were like, oh, Bill, you know, I feel ashamed, you know, lad. You know, they you know. Up to you yeah, people, and I was like, fucking hell, lad, I thought I was on my own with this one, you know. I was scared. I didn't have the, the, the balls to, 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 to tell anyone. Because my dad used to say to me, fucking don't you cry, you get out there, if I hear you, I fucking, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So I was conditioned so I believe in my my like humble opinion. I, I believe there's contributing factors to addiction. I think it's a it's a get out clause where people say I was born an addict, right? Yeah. You might have been born to a, an addictive mother who's on crack and heroin. Mm-hmm. In that sense, yeah, you can come out withdrawing. I get that. I understand that. You, obviously, you're yeah. born addicted then. But I mean, I don't know whether it's in your DNA. I'm not too sure, Kate. Some people might. Some people just have addictive personalities. Yeah. And it can be drugs, drink, gambling, sex. Yeah. There's so many things. The addicts, look, I've just done it tonight, right? I've just done a little video. You'll, I'll, I'll add you to it in a minute. And it was about like, like what an addict is. And my mate said to me, Bill, sit down and read this pamphlet, right? And if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But you want to check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Have a read this. And I read this pamphlet every single day right Kate and I memorised it wow. right and it was called Who's an Addict and it was, it was like about this long and I thought Who's an Addict those who and I, and I read it read it to myself and I thought that's fucking me that's me and I can say that off my head like that now right like I can just, yeah it's like because I know you know I, I live to use and use to live very simply an addict is a man or a woman whose life is controlled by drugs whatever form and you've said it and we've got a void and we can fill it with like um, you know with, with money, we could fill it with like clothes, anything in there. I used to think if I got myself some nice clothes and I looked apart, I'd be all right. I'll feel good. And I did briefly, but it was like, it was an inside job. People was going, oh, you've got to look at the little Billy. Well, fuck little Billy. <laughs> you know all that? It's yeah, inside. It's vulnerability yeah. open and up. I'm mm. a big man. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've had my ear bits off. I've been slashed. Who the fuck is little Billy in all this? And he said, you have not nurtured yourself. You have not allowed yourself to grow up and be a boy and turn into a man. Right, you're going to become a man now. And I was like, oh. So, Did yeah. you to your inner child way? Yeah. yeah. I've done all that ace, adverse childhood experiences. I've, I've, I've gone through every sort of like that from 12 steps to ace. I've done a, a cognitive behavior therapy. I've done a lot. Right. It is good, though. It is. It, it is. is. And it's us. She, for me, and, and, and I'll... I'll Sort of like, I'll I'll encourage anyone to to work on self development, yeah. right? Because there's not a, there's not enough people out there that you know know that stuff. Yeah. And for me, I've, I've I know how I operate, I know how I take, I know how I react. You know, I know I get angry. What's it about? Because um, everything for me was a reaction shape. There was never relationships. I'd always react. What the fuck do you mean, mate, 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 mate? I was self centered. I was self. It was all about me, uh, and it was all because I suffered from low low self esteem. Mm-hmm. So I'm aware. Like I, 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 I fucking sit with people who send me messages and go, Bill, how did you do it? And look, I just did it one day at a time. I picked myself up. I dusted myself down. I walked through the mud and the nails. I got myself clean. And no matter what hit me, like relationships breaking down, I didn't pick up. Right. Sometimes I did, and I learned from it. 
you know, because he had to go back out there. Do you, do you know when you did, like, sort of, there was a catastrophe and maybe you did, that is the hardest part because you feel guilt, don't you? Yeah. Like, it's, I've seen it so many times with some of our residents, how guilty they feel. And it's like, come on, do you know what? We all fucking fall off. We do. Let's just dust ourselves off and start again and put it behind us. It was always the mice that got me. It was never the elephants. Right, well, I'll, I'll explain this. See, if I could get over, like, a debt or a relationship breakdown, right? But it was like the, the it was like the resentments yeah. and, the, and the jealousy and the envy and the bitterness and and, and the snide comments from people and fucking hell and the mistrust. It was the little things, you know, that, like, I couldn't really deal with. Now, I'm fucking bulletproof. You can say what you want, so I'm all right. Right, you can, you can get in the queue with your name calling, right? Get that. Does it, you know, I've had them on social media, you're this, you're that. Sad. See you later. Yeah. I'm gonna swipe you right off. You're you're not like in my life no more. Whereas before I'd engage, yeah, I'd give them the power. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. that is the fucking power. You just you just you just call me a schmackhead and a crackhead and a junkie and I've had it right. I know what I've done. I know what I've used. I know where I've been. I know what drugs and where it took me to commit crime. Right, and I always felt bad about it. Right after the fact, but as long as he had right, it was that was the it's most important. Disease. Yeah, and um. I would never feel good about it and I'd be like, oh my God. And that was the reality when I got to a point where I go, okay, enough is enough. I mm. need to stop. You know what I mean? Because not only am I hating myself, I'm hating people around me. The shame, the guilt that my family are feeling. And that, that was the, like a big motivation. And it, some people don't see that, you know, some people don't learn that and never change. It's mm. sad, you know. They, they maintain addiction all the way through their life because the, that's it. They just, that's all they, they, the, the way it is. You know what I mean? And it's given, I think now, I think it's more open and people like yourself come out and say, yeah, we've all suffered. Um, it's okay. Yeah. And you can recover. So I think, you know, I think things are turning in the right direction. Yeah. And I really look, I know I'm a little, this is about you, but I get really passionate about this stuff, right? Yeah. I remember this, a, a, a mate of mine said to me, Bill, because I was like, I don't fucking value myself. I don't, I don't feel like I've got any self-worth. And he pulled out three fivers and he went, see that, here's a fiver here, Bill, and here's a fiver here. Just got them out the bank, yeah? I went, yeah. He said, see that, I want to crumple it all up, right? I'm going to spit on it. He threw it on the floor. He throws all over it. He said, pick it up. So it's all right. Yeah, I picked it up. He went, how much is that worth? I said, it's a fiver. He said, see that? No matter how many times you've been stood on, spat on, right, crumpled, broken down. He said, that's still a fiver. It still maintains its value, right? Oh, doesn't that. Just because that's crisp doesn't mean this is any different. And just because you've been beaten down, battered and spat on and, and lived a life like that doesn't mean you're any different from him, lad. Like I'm telling you now, don't you get that inferiority or superiority complex going on. You are on an equal equilibrium with everyone else. I like that with yeah. a bit rough around the edges. Yeah, that's what it is. So I was like, oh yeah, it's cool. I loved a mate like that. He had a little bit of wisdom. Yeah. And he did me, he was like a bit of a Yoda. But it was, I needed, like, it's so, I needed someone to tell me in, in, in no uncertain terms, you know, and, um, yeah. and I don't babysit addicts. Yeah. Oh, you're okay start like mothering them and you know rescuing them because that fucking that just you just become a little bit codependent on the fact that like you're, you're losing your power you're allowing other people to take care of your feelings yeah absolutely and my mate went look do you want to meet him lad i went yeah and he drove a car and he went to i'll see you there eh? I went, and, and you want to give us a lift he went no see you later get yourself there fucking walk and i went you're you fucking cheeky fuck, lads, I fucking... he said if you walk Fucking ten miles to get your fucking drugs, lad. Right? In walk the piss and down. Piss and down rain. <laughs> you walk there for your recovery. You don't go to that. I just hated them, but I love the bones of them now. But uh, yeah. Tough love. Tough. That's what you need. Absolutely. Like none of these. I'll pick you up. I'll take you there. I'll, oh, I'll fucking rub you down. I'll give you a little massage. Well, idealistic stuff. But anyway, I'm going on one now because I've been around for a little while, Kate. So anyway, I love the fact that you do all that, right? Um, I do. It's 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 powerful, cause I love to see people grow and see them like when they're fucking on the floor, rock bottom, and the next thing they oh, just it's shed it. Beautiful. It is. It's 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 it's, it's warm, right? I it, it brings tears to my eyes when I see Bill. Do you know what, Bill? If it wasn't for you, if I hadn't read that story that you wrote, I um, I wouldn't be here. And I want to think, fucking hell. Sometimes I feel like a little bit of an imposter. I well, I have imposter syndrome all the time. Yeah, all the time. And that's okay because I won an award last Friday and um, it was in front of all my peers and everything else. And I'm sitting there getting 
fucking pissed with me mates and having a little and if I fucking would have known I was suffering and walks wouldn't have got pissed would I mm. and I got off on the stage and I said you know I suffer from imposter syndrome I, when they were talking then I think yeah but I don't fucking do nothing that's just what life that I don't do anything and I think as a woman in business it's fucking tough Billy like yeah. I know now our phones like, it annoys me like fucking annoys me I'll be on like a um, a building a side job that I'm doing or whatever and my business manager was a 66 year old man she had a tie briefcase and everything else and we'd go bouncing and meeting and we'd sit down and everyone panned it to him as if like I not think I was his PA um, and I'd say something they just fucking ignore me and I'd think you cheeky bastards mm. and I'd just wait I'd sit there then and fucking slip, slouch in the chair and then when they'd all finished I'd go they had done like what they're, they're tender for what they were putting the work and I'd go oh and by the way you never fucking got it you sexist fucking pig and get up and walk out as a woman in business it's tough like, yeah. even to this day men have got it a lot easier than we have and I think when you're a woman out there fighting, you have to give, and anyone in the world, we have to start appreciating ourselves and appreciating what we do and giving ourselves a fucking pat on the back and learning to love ourselves. Like I am at that point now where I could not literally give one flying fuck what anyone thinks of me or the rumours that they say or whatever. So I, I don't care. I've literally got the thickest fucking skin you could imagine. Um, yeah, and I just don't care. I think if that's all you've got to do, and while you're calling me, you're leaving some other poor fucker alone. You yeah. might break. So. And it's like that same. We're blessed with a few short decades. Why, like, why worry about, like, what other people think or save you? And I like the philosophy that Anthony Hopkins come up with. Now Anthony Hopkins is in recovery. Believe it or not, he's been in for about fucking 50, 60 years. And he said, my philosophy is, you know, it's none of my business what people say or think of me. Which is like, it's 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 because if we want to make it our business. If I wanted to, but I did the other day, someone sent me a fucking message and said, you done this years ago, like fucking back in 19 old bong, when you were fucking using, I was like, fucking hell, lad. What do you want me to say about I that? I was like, really, was it me? Uh, have you got any evidence to support this allegation? Because I, I can't remember this, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you're just saying it because, you know, you know, you want to pigeonhole me in that, 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 because I've said that, because I've been on podcasts and I've, I've talked about my life, I've done documents of these movies, I've, I've been in, people know me mm. right to put myself out there and I know when you put yourself on a platform you become a fucking target you might as well have a bullseye in your chest um, but I try I just try to be as honest but yeah that imposter syndrome it's like yeah it happened to me I sat in Cannes Film Festival with thousands of people cheering and clapping and applauding this movie that these actors had been and the directors it's filmed about me being in a fucking prison in Thailand right wow. and they were like wow and I was in a fucking Suxiso from fucking Hugo Bosch and I felt fucking like James Bond, but I was still using him the sly. I just, I was like, can you imagine this, Kate, being in like fucking Cannes Film Festival on a Saturday night with thousands of people cheering and fucking approving all your fucking stuff and then on a Monday morning trying to scrape a tenner together in a crack den in Burke Road <laughs> in the same Suxiso. <laughs> right, it was fucking, it's honestly, fucking bizarre, I was like, it? So that's what you're talking about, imposter, I read that, that that was like me. Like, yeah, all right, Sam, give us a glass of wine, yeah, fucking Sam. Boom, I need to turn it, I don't need to get out of here. And it was horrible, yeah, so. But look where you are now. Yeah, and I think that's what it is with ourselves. We come from this this, this area of like the, the council estates and, you know, like fucking having it really rough and not having much to do. You know, and I, I don't claim to have anything really, but now I'm a lot more better off mentally, physically and financially than I ever have been. Yeah. You know, than I have when I'm using. Absolutely. You know, you know, so I I when you were selling like to be measured neither by wealth. Like, all mm. right, so everyone you know, so interested in what you've got, what you've got on and the car you drive, where you live. It's just like what a loads of fucking bollocks. Yeah. We all have the same size hole when we die. Mm. We all have the same size coffin. Um just that we go out a little bit more luxurious. Just that we can afford to get a wash a little bit more. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think that we all need to do our bit. And we all need to help each other more. Yeah. Like, literally, we will sit there for 
hundred years waiting for Westminster to do anything for Liverpool because they fucking won't. No, they fuck. They will do nothing, and I mm. don't trust any of them. They're all a gang of bastards. I will not be going out to vote in the next election. Because do you remind me of uh, Lawrence Kemp, right? Well, Lawrence is just fucking just a... Do you know what? I don't know Lawrence. Yeah. Um, I don't even think I've ever met him. Do you know what? Lawrence is a lovely fella. I had a bit of a judgment on him when I first heard about him. I was yeah. like, ah, I'm looking this, that and the other. I've only... Because of rumours, yeah. right? I, look, people were saying this about him, that about him. Then I met him. And I've never met such a lovely fella. Yeah. Right? I was a bit suspicious. But um, and I met him and I spoke to him and I thought, wow, you know, this he's exactly the same as yourself, right? Hates Liverpool City Council, right? Had a few quid behind him, wanted to help the city, wanted to help the people in addiction. I thought, yeah, what's his fucking motive, right? And you're the same, exactly. It's weird, isn't it? It's like people like yourselves you, you, you've, you've been like successful and I've, I've been there and that's where like his story was the same and I thought... This is what we need in our city because people who haven't experienced, who some, you know, the people who've got money and haven't missed a meal, you know, they the haven't. Textbook streets, yeah, were the ones who fucking put all the policies. Yeah, in they've place. never missed a meal. They've never yeah. had to fucking stand at a bus stop. They've never had to. Rob up the yeah, you know, they, they've never ran short of lucky. No. So they don't know how it is. And and so when they fucking get something off you, they don't pay you for it. They think it's okay because they haven't, um, you know, they haven't had to like suffer. Like, you're waiting, you know what I mean? I've had they had those times, a family, so while we were doing um, the th- the free foods and drinking and, and that at the sands, and there was a man and woman come in, they had five kids, he was in a wheelchair. And when I say they were on the fucking bones of their ass, really, it was heartbreaking um, to see. And they felt embarrassed as well. They were, like, feeling embarrassed yeah. coming in. I said, listen, girl, I said... The food's on the fucking table. If you don't eat it, it goes in the bin. I said, so I'm grateful for you coming in and eating the food. So you are doing me the favour. Do you know what I mean? And then at Christmas, I'd done like a big free market. Um, like the cross the city donated, like some businesses donated stuff. And that was brilliant as well. I went and got all the pyjamas because I thought the fucking thought of a kid going to bed on pyjamas on Christmas Eve. No new pyjamas on, knocks me sick. And I just feel like there's so many people making money in this city and are all right going in fucking shops buying three grand bags and putting them all over Instagram, but they do fuck all for their own communities or yeah, to help people. There's, there's a few like that, mate, in the, in the city, to be fair, which is sad, you know, No, see it's very it. sad, but I want to shame the bastards. Yeah. I am literally on a campaign to shame them into doing it, shame them into giving back, shame them into helping other people because that's what it's all about. It's about helping others in times of need and helping elevate people as well so you know yeah. there might be someone out there who wants a job and they've got no confidence get out and fucking help them employ the people they were unemployable and turn their lives around yeah so that's fucking brilliant though. i love it so what are you doing with um, yourself these days then i just uh, do you know what i started sister at hq didn't i which was a thing to help women in business so I mentor people. I still work with the jails as well because that's another thing I'm fucking madly passionate about. <laughs> is, tell me about it. Cool. <laughs> um, is the revolving door scenario. Ah, oh, tell me about it. You can't get a bank account. You can't get a deposit for a place to live. So you're homeless. So you can't get a job because you've got a criminal record. What the fuck are you supposed to do? And then they wonder why the reoffending rate is so mm. high. Yeah. Like it kills me. Like really does that. So even during lockdown, like I opened the hotel up and let people who were coming out of jail and were homeless just go and live there because they had nowhere to go. And I was, I like talking to people, Bill, as well, and saying, you know, what what happens? What's your story? Because everyone's got a story, hmm. and it's heartbreaking to hear that these people are just stuck, like we just said, in a rut again. They can't get a job. They've got nowhere to live. What the fuck are they supposed to do? They go out and graft. Yeah. They go out and do whatever they've got to do. Get nicked again and go back. And some of them, Billy, wanted to get nicked to go back. Enough. Because it's all they know, and that was their security and their stability, is to go to jail. And it's just another thing that's heartbreaking. So, yeah, I've I've just been doing a couple of contracts with the MOJ. And do you know what, right? So on, on, before I forget what you just said there, I was, um, you know, when I got released from... from um, my last sentence, I, 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 I,
personal will often show you, help me get a bank account, right? Get a bank account. This is another thing. Get a, get a bank account. I'm living at my mum's by the time. I'll get outside. My mum's got a two, two bedroom bungalow. I've got to live on a camp bed in a, in a, in a front room with my brother who's got autism, my, uh, my stepdad and my mum, right? And, you know, a couple of dogs and a bank account that I've just got. Went to the bank. My money was going in. Two weeks later, they said, we have to cancel this account. I was like, no reason why. Right, I felt really judged. I felt, it. and they knew because it was coming from the prison. The address was the prison, yeah. right? HMP phone cross, boom, right? I was transferring the, the address. I had to get a, you know, a, a proper address. But because it said that, and they'd already accepted it, then they like can't they close my account down and like, give me a twenty five pound like gift voucher? What a kick in the teeth! And then. I was like, fucking embarrassing though, because I was in the bank, and they were like, can you hang on a minute? And I'm like, can you tell me why? Can you give me a reason? And they were like, it's just, it's just not suitable. And I was like, the, it was the, it was the HSBC, an old swan that don't answer me. And I was fucking fuming, and I wanted to contest it when he sent me this twenty-five pound check out for my inconvenience. You know what I mean? But left me out as a bank account. Do you yeah. know these? Um, like I, I've worked with these probation officers as well. Not all is done. Some of them are really good, but a high percentage who I met didn't give a flying fuck. No. Like literally, they just wanted them off the books. Yeah. Like, do, do we didn't even check in on them? Um, they go missing. They were like, oh, we'll give them a couple more days. Like to recall someone costs like twenty grand just for a recall. Yeah. And the money that is wasted that could be used to help people. If there was, this is what fucking pisses me off. The amount of money they waste or uh, daily. So they'll put someone in re- ten people in rehab. 28 grand a pop, 280 grand. Put them back in the same environment. You could have used that 280 grand to do something really fucking constructive with these people. They haven't got a clue. And because it's not their money and it's just government money, these fucking tough notices are signing it off. Yeah, that's sound, that sounds. There should be things in place to protect people and to do a long-term plan, not a short-term, what we've just said, a plaster. Because that's all we're doing. We're just plastering over the same thing. Pull the plaster off. Fucking big gaping hole put a plaster on it again it's gone again there's nothing in no, place to no education either no. you know there's the, the lack of an education the lack of an awareness understanding um, I totally agree with you I know what it's, as long as you give them a national insurance number half of these like pl- these uh, homeless places they'll come and see you but they... all the homeless gaffes you see all the dealers sitting outside there they're all yeah. scoring yeah. going sitting there like scoring going in and they don't give a fuck because you know why they're getting big dollar for them so do you know like the um and i'm not disrespecting any of the, the places or whatever and i'm not going to name some but see these centers in town where for one night for a homeless person they'll get 140 quid yeah. a night what what are the what is the you, you, service user getting for that yeah. when they're coming outside and getting drugs you know it's like just 140 quid for a night you wouldn't pay that for a hotel for a night would you some, some place you get a hotel for fucking 40 quid mm, and then there's some um, if you're commissioned by Liverpool City Council there's some places or by any local government there's some places that will get like 300 quid a week yeah. but there's no support in place nah it's just like what you said there's no um, it's not um, it's not governed no and it's like okay it was just it's just a head on a bed yeah. And there's no um, there's no intimacy, there's no, no compassion, understanding, there's no guidance. No. I, well, I, I, I hate it. I it does my head in. I, I I don't even want to go down that route because I've um, I've experienced it and I felt it and I've had to. I'm, I was more fortunate that from that fucking my mate said to me, "You know what's going to happen to you, Bill?" Because I said, "Look, lads, I'm on a fucking tag. I'm sleeping on a camp bed on my mars fucking floor in the living room." He went, you're going to progress, you know, you're going to go from that camp bed onto the sofa, and then you're going to go from that sofa onto a bed, and then you're going to go from that bed into a fucking, your own place. I was like... <laughs> yeah, you're all and settled I, yeah. kids and Yeah, everything. I was like, what, what the fuck? I've got a baby coming in, you and everything. Oh, um, so my life is just, it's just, it is, it's one step in front of the other, and, and, and just move forward. You know, you're going to get knocked on the way and you're going to get judged and you're going to get door shut. But you know what? Not everyone's going to shut that door. And you're not that everyone, Kate. You're that person that keeps that door open for those people. Shine that light. You know, show them there's a way and there's a path. And that's that's what people in the city like like need, like yourself and Lawrence and others. You know what I mean? It, it means a lot to, you know, it means a lot to, to, to those that are less fortunate. 
And I, I, I fucking take my ass off you. To be fair, thank you. I'm going to cry here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a little whinge sometimes. Uh, no, because I am a dude, I get passionate, I see it. In the state, I think, but then again, I see people who are homeless and think they're not doing something nothing with themselves as well. Yeah, they're not sometimes, Bill. I walk past them right in the fucking business, and we often stand them with their hands open. Do you know what? I'd rather them come and knock on my door and say, Do you want your fucking windows washing? Yeah. Do you want this? Do you know what I mean? I hate this mentality. Of- it's and it's, it's especially if you've I have like I, I work in that sector and I go around that sector, and I think you know, it's the same people for fucking years Bill, now. Do you know what I do? That isn't what I do. You fucking hate me. They'll gas me for money, I'll get I won't give you money, but I tell you what, I've got something that needs doing in the Sansa. So make them go the Sansa. And like, for example, I've just bought all new benches for outside and I uh, made them paint them <laughs> all day. They had to come for three days. You have to make pounds an hour. Um, but I made them work for it. And they were like, can we have our money up front? Can you fuck? So much <laughs> think I am brand new. But that's what I do. I make them come down or if... Something uh, like one of the gardens needs to do, and I'm one of my sites. I'll say, Oh, yeah, you can have it, but you can come and do I'll give you money, but you can come and do this. Yeah. I make them work for it. And, and, that's, and that's how it should be. Yeah. It really is. You know what so I mean? do you know what? Give people a fucking motivation. Chance. Give them, like, like most, let them motivate themselves. And so next time someone in town asks you for money, get them around to yours to fucking wash the wheelie bins or something, but make them in it. Yeah. And that's the right way to do it, I think, to be fair. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're just enabling someone to carry on. Absolutely. Doing what they're doing, and it's uh, everyone needs to eat, Bill. Give a e- shit with them. people want to judge you for that. <laughs> for no, no. Everyone needs to eat, and everyone needs a chance. And if we don't fucking keep giving people chances, you're giving them no hope. No. And when they've got no hope, there's nothing. No, I agree. Right, so we're going to come to the end now. Right. This is a this the la- this is a, a part I always enjoy. What would Kate Stewart say? to a young case to you coming through the doors of life now if you had the opportunity right to see yourself coming through the doors of life what pearl of wisdom what would you don't tell be, yourself don't be such a dickhead don't waste your life um, be confident be strong know your worth I've made so many mistakes Billy like so many stupid fucking mistakes and it's just cliche isn't it if I knew then what I knew now yeah, it's in hindsight. To my yeah. younger self, love yourself. Yeah. Learn to love yourself, be confident, be proud. Put one foot in front of the other every single day and you'll get there, believe and trust the process. And with that, that's, we'll end on that. And thank you very much, Kate. Appreciate it.